It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, time for Off the Press. We will take you through the pages of the national dailies. And we have Chris Kane Wandu who joins the conversation this morning. Chris, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you so much. And I start off with the leadership newspaper and the attention would be on the banner caption. Looking at the header, he says, fuel subsidy, federal government, state head for showdown over FAAC remittances. And that's what you find. Government suspend plans to remove subsidy. Labor insist on protest. And federal government kickstarts one million car auto gas conversation. Uh, conversion in March. Presidency, wait till 2027, Dr. tells Southeast. And Jens Co. suffer investment shortfall over this cause load rejection. Hanifa, Kano revokes private school license. And uh, Burkina Faso, despite echo sanctions, army strikes in the fourth West African country. And just before we move away from the leadership, court issues arrest warrant on Diziani Alison Madweke. Conflicting court orders, seven lawyers to face disciplinary panel. And EFCC rearranged Fanny Kayode orders for money laundering. That's it on the leadership this morning. Would have thought, um, having seen him move from the PDP back to the APC, well, wonders shall never end. We go over to the Punch newspaper this morning uh, with the following headlines on the front page of that paper. Um, the big one there. Labor set for protest, federal government subsidy, a uh, suspend subsidy removal, NBA warns government and the following riders. No going back on protests, we observe deceit in new twist, says Labor. Removal suicidal now, a uh, federal government's action political for 2023 election, says NBA. That's an interesting one. You hardly see the NBA uh, making such statements. Uh, subsidy removal timing wrong, says Minister Lawan Begg's union. Okay, so um, we move up to the top of the front page of the Punch newspaper with this headline, FG probes online banks of a breach of customers' data privacy uh, that can be found on page 29 of the Punch. Autogas, federal government to convert 200,000 vehicles, uh, plans 580 refueling centers. I wonder what Nigerians will think about such a promise. Uh, court issues warrant for DSA's arrest over failed extradition. Federal, federal government local currency debts to hit 44 trillion naira in 2022, uh, says report. Another one here, of course, a coalition storms PDP, APC, sectarians demands Southern President. Um, Jam announced since 2022 UTME registration rejects repentant cheats apology. It's interesting. Uh, businessman, failing station attendant, shot dead as gunman storm Undo community. And uh, fan kicks as customs controller breaches airport security seizes gate forcefully some inter-agency rivalry there um, rubbing my hands as we speak another one villagers flee as ogomonak three others burned to death we have man jailed for 4.6 million naira mistakenly paid into his account a spare parts dealer uh, for internet fraud and uh, wait till 2027 dr c uh, tells southeast sells a tiku for 2000 and 23 presidency. Those are stories coming on the front page of the Punch newspaper. We'll just quickly run through the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Federal government backtracks and retains petrol subsidy. That's the banner caption on the Daily Trust. And you have uh, three riders. The first says, 2022 budget amendment to cover payments beyond June. Build refineries a permanent solution, expert tells government. And shelf protests, Lawan tells Labour, and that's what you find this morning. Away from that, Hanifa, I will sign death warrant of killer. Ganduje is quoted to say, aligned with Shakai and uh, on public execution, Aisha Buhari is quoted. Kano government revokes private school license. Abiola denied proper medical attention. Family replies, Abdus Salami. And Nigeria has world's highest number of out of school children. A UNICEF is quoted on all of that. Explosion rocks church in Taaba. That's the much we can take on the Daily Trust newspaper. 
Let's move over to The Guardian, and uh, we have some interesting stories. Uh, Mercy, federal government sets aside PIA uh, to pay 4.6 trillion Naira on fuel subsidy is the major headline there on the front page of the Guardian newspaper with very interesting writers. Uh, sixth Amendment of 2022 budget, that's uh, federal government. Uh, NLC not going back on 2000 or January 27 uh, nationwide protests. Join labor rallies, Falano urges Nigerians. <laughs> Lawan begs labor to shelve. Thursday protest says it's no longer necessary. Uh, why TUC is opting out of protests. Uh, APC Lord's suspension. Uh, Fede Ferre faults decision. NBA, federal government's suspension and election strategy. And auto gas policy on course says silver. Those are the writers to that headline. We stay with the Guardian newspaper uh, on top. Of the front page, you have the following headlines. SAN, six others may be sanctioned over conflicting orders. And what's happened is that the NBA has launched, uh, did launch an inquiry uh, into these issues and uh, found these SAN uh, and six other lawyers guilty of influencing the judges to give the wrong decisions. CSO Storm APC PDP headquarters demand Southern President in 2023. We'll see uh, how that plays out. NAVDAC halts registration of alcohol in sachet, a glass bottles below 200 milliliters. And Deary Sachs Monarch, others as abducted, commissioner regains freedom. We earlier heard yesterday that the abductors were saying they wouldn't release the commissioner until one of their, their father was released and uh, it's good to know he's back home uh, with his family. At uh, the bottom of the front page of the Punch newspaper, uh, we have the following headlines. Court issues fresh summons for days and his arrest and prosecution. That story uh, details is found, are found rather on page 34. Ogun Monarch for AIDS assassinated, set ablaze. Um, really worrying one there. And uh, at the bottom of the front page of the Guardian newspaper, why Southeast should wait for another five years by Atiku Committee. That story can be found on page eight. Well, um, we just head straight to uh, sharing your thoughts. Chris Kende Wandu uh, this morning. Let's have you share your thoughts on some of the stories. And the big one is the fact that the federal government sets aside the PIA, that's the Petroleum Industrial Act, and uh, to pay 4.6 trillion of fuel subsidy. Well, um, good one, good news. But uh, for me, uh, we are postponing the evil day, uh, whether we like it or not. Uh, because at the end of it all, we we'll realize the fact that if we have done what we ought to do, we won't have been where we are today. When the federal government or this current APC government was campaigning in 2014, 2015, was the election, part of the promises they made to Nigeria were that they were going to revive the um, refineries and they're going to build new ones. This is seven years into that administration. No single um, refinery has been built. Even the one that we have, um, that we pump billions and billions of naira into every day for turnaround maintenance, nothing has been maintained. And that has been the issue. That is where we find ourselves here because practically we import almost 100% of our petroleum from um, across the globe. Nigeria seems to be the only country in the world that produces crude oil in large quantity, but end up importing uh, petroleum products. And that is where the problem is. And that is the issues at stake. So, um, good enough, the government uh, have listened to labor, they have listened to all um, Nigerians that there is need not to remove the oil subsidy or the petroleum subsidy, whatever we, we call it. But we are still postponing the evil day because whether we like it or not, we we'll continue to go this route until we do the needful, until we decide to do the right thing, until we decide to make sure that our refineries are working, until we stop importing petroleum products, we'll continue to find ourselves in this problem. Now, what is the government trying to do? Uh, they're just trying to um, come into the back door, and um, uh, the belief is that they are talking about Dangote, oh, Dangote refinery will come out. Dangote itself uh, came out to say during the week that. Uh, uh, by September, that the, uh, the refinery will be uh, will start producing. And what the government has done, instead of investing in the ones the refinery will have, 
They have gone to take up shares with Dangote in Dangote uh, refinery. I said that is the solution to the problem. And so I have always said, we are only trying to create a monopoly. If Dangote decide, uh, refinery comes on straight in September, yes, we might have the capacity to be able to refine enough. But we are also putting our faith in the hands of the uh, of one man who will decide one day to increase the prices of coal. And there's nothing we can do about it. We have already seen it in other sectors where certain organizations have a monopoly on certain products and services. And at any given point in time, they just increase prices and there's nothing we can do about it. But I still believe, and I'll repeat myself, that what we're doing is just postponing the input day. Don't forget that the PIA has been signed into law by the president and some people are already thinking that that is the way to go. The PIA is a bill that took the National Assembly close to 20 years to get to put together and until the president signed it. But with the retention of the uh, oil subsidy again, that puts another kind of uh, spanners into the works. Of, uh, I don't know how the PIA is going to be implemented now because we are supposed to be talking about the deregulation of the um, petroleum and oil sector. I don't know that, how that is going to happen. But good enough, the government has a serious name. And the Minister of um, uh, Finance and that of the uh, Minister of State for Petroleum came out yesterday that said that it would be more problematic to remove subsidies and the President is against the removal of subsidies. So let's see how that pans out. Okay. And uh, we'll see how it goes in okay. the, 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 the months. Thank you, Mr. Wadu. Um, um, the, 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 the National President of the uh, Nigeria Bar Association, Alumni Akpata, has said that uh, this reversal or U-turn by the federal government is simply uh, an election strategy. Do you agree with that? Yes, I tend to agree with the president of uh, uh, MBA and, uh, and so many others that have come to speak on that. I think it's more political than economic. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's more political than economic. Um, we just had a few months to the election. And uh, my personal belief is that the federal government, uh, the current government of APC, wouldn't want to do anything that we should see shooting itself by the foot. But if you, if you look at it from uh, other angles, you come to realize that this has been the bad. I remember vividly during the campaign in 2014, uh, before the election, where the president at um, uh, Chatham House I said there is nothing like oil subsidy. I'm sure you remember that. The president said it at Chatham House, London. Then what was those interviews that he wants to see? He wants to see and he wants to be convinced because he was asked a question, what are you going to do? But he said there is nothing like oil subsidy. That those that are the PDP government led by um, Good Lord Jonathan, they were deceiving Nigerians, talking about all that is nothing like some oil subsidy. That was what he said. But he came into office and he retained that. And so those are the this. Um, the number of lies that uh, this government told Nigerians in 2015, so many, so many of the promises they made to Nigerians, none, most of them were not fulfilled. And so I totally agree with the NBA president that this is more political. Than, if they can have their way, definitely they would have uh, removed the subsidy. Don't forget that the timeline has been put. It's supposed to be, this subsidy is supposed to end in June, and July, by July 2022, um, Nigerians are not going to enjoy that. But um, because of the threat from labor and so many women in Nigerians and people like you and I, um, the finance of federal and the minister of finance was telling us this now that the refineries are going to be revived, they are going to be, are going to build more. What, what are you going to do within uh, less than one year? Are you going to be seven years? Are you going to build refineries within one year before you leave office? Are you going to turn around the Refineries within one year before you leave office. Okay, all right. I don't believe them. Mr. So Wado, we'll leave that story, that story for now because we're going to look at it in depth at some point um, and uh, move on to other stories. We'll stay uh, with the uh, Vanguard or the Guardian newspaper. And uh, the headline, the civil side organization, is also carrying some other papers, uh, storming the headquarters of, of the two major political parties. You don't usually hear that. You usually would hear, oh, they went to one you know, uh, the headquarters of one party. But this time they went to the headquarters of the two major political parties um, demanding for a southern president come 2023. Um, what, what I trust on this, will, will, will something like this work, you know, civil society organizations? Do the politicians really care when these groups make these demands and go carrying placards and all that? Equity and fair play um, is coming to play. And if we look at the trends since 1999, 
um, return to uh, civilian uh, rule, as you say. You have, you've seen the trend that there has been some kind of gentleman agreement that the president should rotate between the North and the South. And the South had it between um, during the days of um, Mabasanjo through 1999, before Yorada came in. But unfortunately, um, Yorada couldn't see out his tenure, which led to um, uh, Kulo Jonathan taking over from him, who is also a Satana. Then, best President Buhari um, had been in office uh, going to at least seven years, going to eight years, and it's from the North. And it's believed that that gentleman agreement um, should, uh, should be uh, adhered to and respected and that the presidency should go back to, um, to the South. But let me put this in context that there is not where in the constitution that it was written that the presidency must rotate between the North and South. I think we should get that very, very clear. It is within the political parties to be able to agree on the, uh, uh, what they need to do, either the APC or the PDP or whatever part, political parties, but there is nothing, what has been said in the constitution, is equity distribution of the resources and offices in there that has been shined uh, in the constitution. I think within the, within the second schedule or the chapter of the constitution. But um, it is the right of um, the, those um, protesting, asking for the president, the president to be moved to the south. Don't forget that some governors from the north also, also totally agree with this. But it's going to be a battle of it within the political parties. It depends on where the political parties are going to zone their uh, uh, um, their presidential uh, um, seats uh, come 2023. Uh, it will also be a factor of what is going to Don't forget the APC uh, in the next few, I think 27th or thereabouts, is going to hold this convention where it's going to split its national leader. And it has already been said that when you have the national chairman of the political party, uh, that party, from one uh, certain session of the country, then automatically the presidential ticket goes to the other um, uh, part of the country. But I believe that it will be more of negotiation, discussion, and not just about protest. Politics is about give and take. Um, all the gladiators in the deep eye should be able to meet and uh, interact with other Nigerians. No one session of the country can elect a president. It's not possible. The North alone cannot elect the president of Nigeria. Neither will the South alone. The president will only go to any, uh, any candidate that is well favored or voted for by people from the North and the South. But let me take it a bit further. And um, by um, inclusion, the statement credited to Chief uh, Alejo Demond uh, Dupaisi um, yesterday, who is the chief campaigner for Atiku Abubakar, where he said that this, 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 the Southeast should give uh, Atiku the opportunity to be the president, that he's going to be president for one for, uh, for one term, four years, then it will be the turn of the Southeast. And the question I ask myself, why don't Atiku wait for the Southeast to get it for four years, then after that, they can hand over to him? That is the issue. But uh, I think we should be debating based on issues and not just this kind of uh, sentiment. We are used to this. There are so many um, promises that have been made in the past, agreements that we are each other. Chris Wandu, uh, let's move away from that uh, topic now and look at the issue of uh, Hanifa, the, the young kid that was killed, I mean, kidnapped, and then she was killed by uh, the proprietor of a school. I mean, there's a connection with the proprietor of the school. And the fact that the Kanu state government has revoked uh, license of private schools. Some people are asking that, what's the connection? Why do you revoke the license of private schools? And what difference does he make uh, with the issue of security in Nigeria? Well, the issue of Hanifa is very, very sad. It's a very sad uh, a very sad one, a, a five-year-old girl kidnapped and killed by a teacher after people receiving ransom. But that is just one out of it. There is another one trending that most people have been, that we've not been talking about and which I think we should also focus our attention is. Another eight-year-old girl has been found to have been student, have been found to have been kidnapped uh, in Kaduna, and she was killed despite the fact that her parents paid um, three million naira ransom. I'm sure you must have been reading that. That happened a few days ago, just after that of Anifa. And that, to me, is a trend that seems to be happening now. And the government needs to come out as quickly as possible to be able to make sure that we protect our children. We protect the children that we hand over to school. And um, where our people just waking up and kidnapping them and, and getting them killed. Back to the question. Um, I think um, the decision by the 
um, um, Kano State, uh, State gov uh, government on um, revoking the licenses of all um, um, private school in the state is coming to be hasty for me because we are in the midst of a, a new term, um, schools just resume in January. I would have think that what they should have done is face face evaluation of schools, um, um, of um, private schools. Then uh, from there, you cannot be able to bet. You say that you revoke, by revoking the licenses of all the uh, private schools, what you are saying in essence is that all the children in those schools should go back home and stay, depending when you are going to finish your evaluation and they resume. That is not the way to go. Uh, you cannot pray with the baby with the bad, uh, bad water. Um, that to me is not the way to go. The first and foremost thing is that deal with the issue at stake. What um, has been the problem? People, if these government schools are working uh, and, and working efficiently as it's supposed to be, people will be sending their children to private schools. But it's because of the total collapse of the public schools that make the parents send their children to private schools, and that is the only alternative they have. So, uh, for me, uh, that to me is hasty. Uh, I think I, I want to look at it from the political that is just uh, the government is just trying to be politically uh, correct. But in trying to do that, um, they are not getting it right. There's no need to be broken that. What, as I said, it should be school by school basis. They should look at the schools and uh, try to have an evaluation of the various private schools. Okay. If they still will not be doing the right thing, then... Thank you very much, Mr. Wando. Uh, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, interesting, you know, the take you have on this, but we want to look at another story. We stay uh, with the Vanga newspaper. Um, they have uh, reminded us or informed us of, about a move by the... Um, uh, the Nigeria Bar Association. Uh, if you would recall, sometime last, last year, um, all of us were facing uh, the judiciary with the um, conflicting court judgments emanating from uh, different parts of the country on political matters, uh, including the one in River State regarding Uchi Secondos, and you had one popping up in Cross River State and another one popping up somewhere in the northern part of the country. And remember that the, um, uh, the Honorable uh, the Attorney General of the Federation did call, you know, uh, the the state attorneys general or no, the, the state's uh, 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 chief justices to to his office to say what's going on here. And I think some other things have happened and we've all moved on. Uh, but the judiciary and the issues that people complain about still remain. Now, what, what's your take on this story from the um, the Guardian newspaper? Uh, SAN six others or six other lawyers may be sanctioned over conflicting orders. Um, the, um, the president of the Nigeria Bar Association, that's on the front page of the Guardian newspaper, um, he was said to have um, hosted a press conference uh, to address stakeholders on some issue. And one of the reporters there reminded him um, that uh, they had set up a committee to look into the roles of lawyers in the issuance of uh, conflicting orders by some judges. So it was asked, what's happening? Um, to that uh, committee. And um, uh, the NBA president replied, hinting that a senior advocate of Nigeria and six other lawyers um, have uh, are be believed to have aided judges uh, or influenced them in the issuance of conflicting orders might soon face the legal practitioner's disciplinary counsel. Uh, what's your take on this? Well, um, I believe that the for us to get it right in our judiciary, as it's, as it's where, the bar and bench should rise up to the occasion. Um, it's, it, 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 it's so um, annoying when you see some of these um, issues uh, uh, rising up within the judiciary, because we have always seen the judiciary as the last hope of the common man. But is, it, is that what it is presently? Some months back, we saw um, judges that were summoned by NJC. And um, and the, and um, on the issue of um, conflicting judgments that we are given uh, by some of these judges, at the end of it, or what came out of it? Yes, we heard that from we're going to um, salaries are going to be or their salary will not be paid and the rest of it. That is, I've always believed that we should go or move on with the sledgehammer and anybody found one within the judiciary, either as a judge or uh, as a lawyer, should be so sanctioned. The Nigerian Bar Association has its disciplinary uh, committee, which from time to time uh, look at the conduct of lawyers as it were. And I believe it's based on that that uh, some of these uh, people that were uh, mentioned by the uh, president of the association that um, some of them have, uh, have been uh, looked at and disciplined. And um, 
I, I, I think that is the right way to go. There is a lot going on within there, a lot of rot within our judiciary. And that in itself is affecting a lot of things because if we don't get it right within the judiciary, then we are in trouble. Um, you, you see every day, we are judges know that they don't have a right or what we call jurisdiction in, in, in law. They don't have the jurisdiction. Once you don't have a jurisdiction on a particular case, then you cannot entertain it. But you see judges knowing that they don't have any jurisdiction on those cases going ahead to um, entertain um, such suits. You also see um, judges within the same rank also giving conflicting judgment. Once a judge of, uh, has given a, a, a judgment on a particular issue, the next thing to do is to take it to the higher court if you want to, in terms of appeal. You don't go to another court of the same jurisdiction to be able to start with, and that is what has been happening. So NJC, as well as the Nigeria Bar Association, should be up and running and make sure that everybody or anybody that has right. found one thing okay. is well disciplined on issues yeah. like this. Yeah. So, 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 finally, in, in, in just a, a minute, you can you give us your thoughts on uh, the fact that the uh, Nash, the um, uh, Federal High Court, um, has had to again. Uh, issue a warrant, an order for the arrest of Deze and Alice Madweke. This is the second time. The judge in the first matter at the High Court in Abuja um, was is, is dead. He, he has passed on. This that first order was re, re, was made in 2018. Till today, she has not been able to uh, be brought back into the country to face charges. And and this is a fresh order. So, what are your thoughts on this in in one minute, sir? Yes, and. Uh just to add to that one as well, there are concerns about uh, diplomatic passports of the Dominican Republic, which grants her that immunity, I mean, makes her immune to any arrest, however, including uh, the Interpol. Well, it is not just to grant uh, 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 put out an extradition order. It is how to go to make sure that she's extradited from where she is. Where is she now? Is she in London? She's in Comoros Island or Dominican Island or whatever it is. An order of a court is an order. And it is within the, once that order has been given, then it is left for the police to be able to do the move. So the order has been made. It is now left for the Nigerian police to be able to liaise with Interpol to make sure that uh, we'll be able to uh, make sure that the uh, Zani Alessi Madre is uh, about to come. But the fact is that. With the countries where she's residing, complete with Nigeria, that is where we need to take up the diplomatic angles. I think it's good beyond just ordering, but we should be able to look at the diplomatic angle. When, if we have an extradition um, agreement with a country where she's staying, where she's staying, then that is possible. But if we don't have it, then it is impossible for us to extradite her from wherever she is. So we should be looking at those extradition or whether Nigeria has a bilateral extradition agreement with the country where she is. If it's clear we do, then that will be tender in, 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 in wherever she is, and then um, that will be made possible. But if we don't, then all will and she There's no way we can get Mr. started Wadu, to we, come. We, we, we appreciate your time. We have to move on. Thank you very much for your time and for joining us this morning. Chris Kainde, who, who I call a detribalized Nigerian, <laughs> with, with, with those names from different parts of the country. <laughs> um, Chris Kainde, Wando. He's a chartered mediator and consolator. He's been a guest analyst on Off the Press. Merci. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice day. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for being part of the conversation. We look forward to having more of you on Tuesdays. And that's it. We will come back with the papers tomorrow. And as always, we would always have a guest who joins the conversation. Let's uh, uh, get back with the men conversation. I mean, we're going to come back with the men conversation at 8 o'clock where we look straight at what's happening in the West African region with Burkina Faso experiencing another uh, coup.